Gather round, children, and I will tell you a story. The Palantiri were the seeing stones of Middle-earth, the fictional world of J.R. Tolkien in Lord of the Rings. The Palantiri, singular Palantir, could only show visions or intended thoughts of the users. Their vision was not based on obstacles, but on darkness. They could see through things, but they would only see shadows. That sounds a bit unreliable, but it sells. Welcome to Big Brother meets Big Data. Palantir Technologies is a premium Silicon Valley startup whose business it's been to write clever software to track your digital footprints and then join the dots to predict who you are and where you might go next. Its directors are Peter Thiel, Mr. PayPal and Facebook, and Alex Carp, an eccentric philosopher who has turned their Palo Alto headquarters into a replica of the Shire. <laughs> if it sounds like a fairy story, it's not. Palantir software has been labelled the killer app. It was used to hunt down and murder Osama bin Laden. Palantir is well in. Its advisors are Condoleezza Rice and George Tennant, ex-CIA. It was funded by the CIA, who became a client back in 2004. Other government clients are the NSA, the FBI, the NYPD, and a number of counter-terrorism and military agencies. This baby has been valued at five to eight billion dollars and is predicting another billion in private sector deals in 2014. Forbes magazine reports that Palantir is emerging from the shadow world of spies and special ops to take corporate America by storm. Private sector deals now account for close to 60% of the company's revenue. The identities of corporate clients are usually kept secret, but they include JP Morgan, various hedge funds, News Corp, and Bank of America. As we recall from Palantir's dealings with HB Gary Federal in a sort of plan to destroy WikiLeaks and their media partner, Glenn Greenwald. What karma for Glenn to bump into a certain Edward Snowden further down the track. When Anonymous gained access to thousands of emails on H.B. Gary's servers, the emails revealed that Palantir had worked with H.B. Gary to develop proposals to attack WikiLeaks, to attack their infrastructure, to blackmail their supporters and identify donors. When sprung, Palantir put an engineer on leave apologised for his role in the plan and cut their ties with H.B. Gary, as you do when you don't want the dirt to spread. After that, they installed a bat phone directly to Alex Karp's office to report unethical clients <laughs> and reinstated their engineer. Now, you might be asking yourself at this stage, if these guys are the elves or the Black Riders. Palantir Technologies is perhaps a pioneer in an upcoming consumer industry of selling private information for profit. And they are cheap as compared to Booz Allen, IBM, and Lockheed Martin. But Forbes magazine suggests that Palantir restrict their services to the top end because some people won't be happy if they go totally public. Quote, it helps its customers see too much. My ass. <laughs> Alex Carp claims his turnkey service, as he calls it, helps the government go after bad guys. Who those bad guys are, he doesn't know quite often and never finds out. It's tough, he says, because his targets don't leave behind any tangible evidence, such as fingerprints or DNA. Whether they actually are bad guys, he takes on faith in his government 
or whatever client he's working for, and of course, if the back phone doesn't ring. According to former employees, Palantir has worked in Saudi Arabia despite staff's misgivings about human rights abuses in the kingdom. But Carb doesn't seem to have picked up. In an interview on the Palantir website, Carb assures us that they are the good guys and showcases a project where they chase the infiltrators of the Dalai Lama's computer. Wow. He stumbles, however, when he's asked who it was and has to admit that it wasn't really clear in the end if it was a government or teenagers, which is a pretty wide margin of error and a fail as far as I'm concerned. Palantir's so-called predictions on who you are and what you're going to do next all hinge on assumptions and probabilities all along the line. No light, just shadow. And as it turns out, the bad guys are not always bad guys. Sometimes they're activists, sometimes journalists. The carp loves to drop in the word turnkey when he's selling his crystal ball kit. The irony he doesn't see is that it is the perfect tool for turnkey totalitarianism. You put all this surveillance into place and then someone flips the switch. A new president or a new prime minister Click. Suddenly, the technology is not being used as intended. Click. And anti-war activists are raided by the FBI. Click. And refugee activists are threatened by the Department of Immigration and Border Security here in Australia. That's Vanessa I'm talking about. Alex Carp claims to be an advocate for civil liberties. He assured a talk show host that innocent people would not be swept into the dragnet and that the patterns his software detects only relate to terrorists. He says that the data Palantir supplies is tagged for one use only and implies that his company has control over who sees who and how the information will be used. The US Justice Department's Inspector General in a series of reports on FBI practices found systematic disregard for the required procedures for demanding records, false statements in affidavits to both telecommunication companies and the FISA court, improper acquisition of journalist phone records, use of national security authorities in cases completely unrelated to national security, and attempts by superiors to retroactively conceal these improprieties. Speaking of patterns, a pattern of failure to report potential violations to the oversight board was also noted. William Binney, a former senior technical director for the NSA and the man who led a team of thousands to create the agency's post 9-11 mass surveillance tool resigned because he saw the whole thing spin out of control and his country turn into a police state. Binney initially balked when he saw that the NSA data was being used to prosecute petty crime and not too many terrorists. Palantir's director admits that real terrorists are apt to change their patterns and cut their ties as soon as anyone in their circle is arrested. Going after ordinary citizens, on the other hand, is a much more fruitful, easy, and lucrative process. Binney realized that his government's actual use of data gathered through spying had become a totalitarian process. The American Civil Liberties Union describes Palantir as a true totalitarian nightmare. And this is the final, this is the final problem. Such an architecture of surveillance, once established, would be difficult to dismantle and prove too potent a tool of control if ever it fell into the hands of people who, whether through panic, malice, or misguided confidence in their own ability to secretly judge the public good, would seek to use it against us. Edward Snowden revealed that this architecture is in place. Mass surveillance of all citizens. An unprecedented level of eavesdropping. 
all ready if your name comes up to prosecute you for any kind of crime or misdemeanor. And if you happen to be living in the lucky country at the moment, you might even get into a bit of strife for criticism of your government, especially if you happen to work for it. The more innocent citizens are spied upon by government agencies and directly intercepted if they get lippy, the more secretive governments have to become to get away with this. There's the obvious problem of invasion of civil liberties, but there's another more subtle issue that makes the whole process very iffy. Evidence stops being forensic when it gets to the digital stage. Alex Carp admits that, and one can only conclude that his company sells hunches. Around that, his clients have cultivated a devout belief in the Philosopher's Stone. They've established a cloud of secrecy to prevent skeptics, lawyers, and moralists getting in. And they've assured us that a well-paid job is being well done. Meanwhile, copies of NSA documents are not allowed to be passed on for analysis, even by their neighbours, the NYPD. And thus the circle of trust is hermetically sealed around an irrational, self-serving seat of power that is frightened of our own shadows. Peter Jackson should make a film about that. Come on, Jacko, stick your neck out. Woo! <laughs>